Hi, it's Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team bringing the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. Today I'm at the Cove in Fishers, Indiana. This is a Fishers home development. Uh, home prices here span from 400 to 900 plus. Uh, we're gonna walk through their model home, which is really pretty sweet. And then we're gonna look at three uh, quick move-in homes that are ready now. Hey, follow me, let's go take a look. The model home is a classic two-story. It's got a three-car garage. Right now it's set up with the sales office over there on the right, but that'll soon be, um, or in time, will be a three-car garage. This has, uh, I think it has four bedrooms and God, more bathrooms than that. Uh, but it has a lot of customizable features, which is something that uh, Fisher's Homes uh, brags about or likes to take credit uh, for doing. And uh, so let's see what we've got here. Got uh, nine foot ceilings here in this entryway even. It's a uh, good size and attractive. You've got a powder room off to the right with a coat closet. And right inside the door, you have a very large office in this Huxley model. You could easily have uh, two desks or more in here. And then you come into the main gathering room. Big, big island. You gotta like this. Big, deep farm sink. People like that. You got a clear view all the way around. Lots of natural light. You got a nice stone tile fireplace right in front. Gas log. I like they carry it all the way to the ceiling, the chase all the way to the ceiling. Hidden back here in the corner, you're gonna like this in the kitchen. You've got a butler's pantry. Plenty of storage for all those things that uh, you don't use all that often or you want to clear dishes away or you want to prep some stuff back here. You've got a uh, bombshell, bomb shelter quality uh, pantry back here. Kitchen itself, um, quartz countertops, soft clothes uh, cabinets, architectural all the way to the ceiling. Got stainless steel appliances. You've got a gas cooktop, which I really like. If you ever cook on gas, you're never gonna go back and cook on electric. Uh, nice attractive backsplash. You've got the double oven here, microwave and convection. Dishwasher tucked under the cabinet, or counter island counter, excuse me. This has got a nice overhang. It's even got five uh, stools tucked under there with plenty of room. Over here to the uh, right of the kitchen in the main gathering room, we have, oh, you can call it a morning room or, uh, I don't know, it looks like it's set up for a cocktail hour, but uh, any number of things you could do with this, but a uh, pleasant place to sit and spend your time, read a book, listen to music. But nice open space. People gotta love this. Just perfect for a casual lifestyle. Big dining area. I mean, this is an eight top. If it was Thanksgiving dinner, you could drag this table out and put a couple leaves in it, and you could seat 20 people in here. Um, this leads right out to patio, concrete patio. Gotta love that uh, brick wallpaper, don't you? Okay, let's go upstairs, see what it looks like. Carpeted stairs, cuts the noise down. Coming down, it gives you a nice view. Main gathering room, dining room. Top of the stairs, we turn right into a bedroom here. It is good size. Big windows. Plenty of room in here. You could arrange this a number of different ways, but there's plenty of room for whatever you wanted to do in here. It has a uh, small walk-in closet and a private bathroom, nicely done. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Got a nice linen closet here in the hallway. Another good sized bedroom. 
plenty of room again, desk or wing chairs, whatever you wanted to do. Similar size closet to the one we were just in. This is set up with the next bedroom is a Jack and Jill situation. It's got the double vanity and then uh, the uh, tub and shower and the commode are in a private uh, room. So two people can be used in the bathroom at the same time. Nice wide hallway. Gotta love that. This is the bedroom on the other side of the Jack and Jill. A little bigger closet on this one. Decent sized room. And then right outside it, it's the laundry room. Decent size, got a laundry sink, got some cabinetry. And then I think you're gonna like this. This is the master. You gotta like the tray ceiling. Really makes it live a little larger, but there's a lot of room in this uh, master bedroom. You got two big nightstands, king size bed, good size chest of drawers. And there's room if you wanted, uh, you know, something at the foot of your bed or over in this corner, you could do a wing chair or something. For that matter, you could do it over here. They have the, the French doors, which are real nice. Makes you, uh, gives you a little feeling of luxury. Okay. Walk in French doors on the bathroom. You have walk-in closets on either side, him and hers. And you got a nice focal point with that uh, soaker tub right in front of you. Good light with the windows. You've got a linen closet here. You've got the uh, double vanities and they're separated so nobody's throwing elbows. You have the uh, private commode room. And you got a nice big size shower tiled nicely. One of the things that I like, is it's got a seat at the shower head end, which is great for shaving legs. It, uh, one of my pet peeves is when they put it at the other end and you just scratch your head, why? But uh, this is a nice, decent sized master bathroom, nicely done. So, Great master ensuite, I would say. Okay, let's go back downstairs and uh, see what we've got down here. I like this view from up here. You walk down these stairs, you feel like you're in something pretty classy. Okay, the basement. Nice windows going down there, that's a nice touch. You don't see that very often. good view, eh? So play a room here. You can do the bar thing. You can do the theater room. You can put game tables in, pool table, whatever your pleasure is. This is just nicely done. I really like the uh, color ceilings down here. It makes you feel like you're not in a cave. Um, but check out this bar situation. Full-size refrigerator, all kinds of counter space, cabinetry that's nice. A lot of things you could do with this. Let's see, you're using this for a variety of things, but a great place to entertain. And then uh, tuck back here. Got another full bath. Nicely done storage room back here. Some people would call this their bomb shelter or make it so. And uh, back here we have our mechanicals. Lots of storage space in here. Got your furnace and your water heater. Some pumps, injector pumps, electrical, other wiring, but plenty of room in here for storage. Or you can make this a workout room. A number of different options. Take one more look at this room. This is uh, where you're gonna spend your time. Don't forget that butler pantry. 
or the morning room or the cocktail hour room. Nice. Pretty sweet house. So four bedrooms, four and a half baths. You gotta love that gathering room. The finished basement is pretty deluxe. Hey, you put this together like they just spec'd it out here with all the bells and whistles and you're still only at 8.30. I think that's pretty sweet. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, we're down the block and uh, we're in front of two paired patio homes. Now, these are detached single family homes, but they are uh, patio homes. So we're gonna take a look at uh, two of them here and they are two different floor plans and they are ready uh, for move-in, quick move-in, okay? We'll uh, check out this one first. This is the Amelia. You know, when people think of new construction, so often they think it's gonna be a nine month ordeal. And uh, that's just not the case all the time. Uh, like these two homes and the next one we're looking at are uh, ready to go. Okay, we're inside the Amelia. I like the wainscoting on the entryway here, the archway over uh, in the hallway. Gives a, a nice view into the gathering room. But right to your left here are a pair of bedrooms. Pretty decent size. Obviously you could use one of these for an office if you wanted. Closet. And then you have the mirror image across the hall here. Not huge, but there are three of them. And between these two, it's the hall bath. Full bath with tub and shower. Okay, proceeding down the hallway to the right here. This is the uh, entryway from the garage. Two store or two car, fairly deep. That helps. Got a coat closet right here, and uh, you've got your laundry room right here. Set up a washer and dryer and uh, water softener if you want one. You could put a laundry sink in here as well. Uh, this closet contains your water heater and um, a furnace. And then right out here, I like this. This is a bench seat. You tuck your uh, boots when you take them off down below. Uh, you stuff your mittens and your caps up above. Place to hang your book bags. Hey, it's good. Okay, coming into the main gathering room. It is open with great natural light. The nine foot ceilings really add to the whole feel here. Got a good size island, good work area, good view out to the fireplace, gas log. You know, even though there are all these windows, there are still good places to hang prints and photos and that type of thing. You've got a good area here for a dining room table. You can seat uh, oh, at least six without any trouble and probably more. On the other side, you have concrete patio. So you can bring your uh, barbecue right in here to your table or into the kitchen. Kitchen's got a nice, island's got a nice overhang, so put, I don't know, four stools there. You've got the uh, tile backsplash. Soft clothes architectural cabinets. You've got stainless steel appliances. Gas cooktop, love it. Really good size pantry. That comes in handy. Refrigerator goes there. Good workspace. Let's see what the master looks like. Little alcove there so you have some privacy. Pretty good size. And we have master bath. Don't need that. Okay, you have double vanities, linen closet. Better find the light here. Okay, pretty good size master uh, bedroom closet. Private commode room. And a nicely done shower. Um, 
I like this, it's got a seat at the back, but then it's got a ledge here for shaving. So, kind of well thought out. Put all your bottles and everything on that, so I like that. So all in all, this would be a pretty nice master ensuite. This comes in at uh, 1,683 square feet. You, it's uh, ready to go right this second, and the ticket on it is 525,000. Um, if you have interest in seeing any of these houses, just uh, text me or book a call or call me, and uh, we'll get you set up and get you scheduled and and see if it's something that might interest you. Okay, let's go see what the next one looks like. Okay, we're gonna walk next door and look at their Wilmington model. Uh, this one's gonna have a little wrinkle that may appeal to some folks. It's got nice curb appeal. And this one is the Wilmington, let's uh, check it out. Okay, this one's uh, got a quicker entry into the main gathering room. It does have the nice wainscoting on the uh, foyer here though. It has a really nice office here with the double glass doors. Makes it nice um, whether you want to keep the kids out or the guests out or I don't know, at the end of the day, uh, my office is in my home and uh, when I'm done working, I want to pull that door shut and I want to be done with it, you know? So, hey, there you go. Um, if we go to the left here, got a coat closet. You have your garage access, two car, not overly generous. You could put uh, a seat here with, uh, you know, for book bags and mittens and boots, that would be a good use of that space. You have a bedroom here. Not real big, but gets the job done. And a full bath right here off of it and in the hallway here. Okay. Comes into the main gathering room. Open. A little bit different design than what uh, you see oftentimes. So from here at the island. You've got your dining space in front of you. Nice wainscoting, nice windows. And then you have your um, living area, the family room, the great room, whatever we want to call it, over here. But it's all open and everybody can uh, interact as they see fit. Okay, so we have uh, quartz countertops. Behind us here we have pantry. This little alcove here, or, or uh, arched uh, uh, passageway, comes right through to the garage door, which is nice. You bring groceries right in. Architectural cabinets, soft closed doors, tile backsplash, stainless steel appliances, gas range. Big dining area. And you could do some things with that if you wanted, if you wanted a buffet table or a nice space in the dining area. Um, you could put a good size table if you want or an expandable table. There's room for a buffet table. There's room for a hutch. Um, and then you have your main living area. And that leads out to your patio, which is covered, which is a nice touch. You've seen that a lot these days. I think people like that. Everybody's afraid of the sun, so um, it keeps them out of the sun, but gets them outside. Over to the right here, tucked down this hallway, is your master. Pretty good size. Get everything in here that you need. And then hidden behind these uh, French doors, is a nice master bath. So you have uh, dual vanities, good size walk-in closet. Most people like that. You could even add some additional shelving in here, shoe racks, whatever. Now at this end, we have a uh, commode room, linen closet, and a nice tile, large shower. This one's got a bench seat that goes all the way across, which is kind of nice too. That's a little different. 
So nice master bath and nice master ensuite. But hey, we're not done. And oh yeah, here's the laundry room right here. Okay, but hey, go upstairs here. We've got storage under the stairs. Now we'll go up, carpeted stairs. Keeps the noise down, got good light here. We come to the top of the stairs and you got a nice big loft. With good windows, you got your mechanicals tucked behind here. This is good space, whether you want, uh, you know, second place to hang out. Heck, this is maybe as big as the uh, living room downstairs. So there's a lot of things you could do with it, uh, whether it's, uh, this is where you watch your movies or maybe you put some desk up here to go with it or heck I've seen workout rooms up here, kids playrooms. Uh, you could put uh, you know, a pool table. There's just a lot of different uses you could have for this space. It's good. I think it's got a private bath right here, full bath, and then you're into another bedroom. So this is good space. You have uh, the boomerang kid or some other situation where you want a little bit of privacy. This is a good sized room with a uh, walk-in closet and this bathroom that's used only by really the people that are up here in the loft or in this bedroom. And so you could do something like with a suite almost with the loft, bedroom and bathroom. So there's a whole lot going on here and this might work for somebody. I mean, everybody's situation is different and you just gotta find the house that works for you, right? Isn't that what it's all about? Um, you've gotta get out and walk through some different houses and so that uh, you can see what appeals to you. What I find is people can look online all they want and they can find houses that check boxes and stuff, but most people buy on how a house feels. They're walking through it and they just kind of look around and it, it just comes over them and it's something that they like. So I don't know if this is the right one for you or not, but I do encourage you to get out and walk around. Uh, the ticket on this one with the loft is 550. Okay, we're in front of a real nice two-story with over 3,300 square feet. Let's go inside and check it out. Okay, we're stepping inside the Stanton. This is a very elegant house. Uh, we've got tall ceilings everywhere. You walk in immediately to your left is a very nice large office with attractive wainscoting. You've got the French glass doors. You've got crown molding. Um, it's just really nicely done. To your right is a large dining room, again with wainscoting. Uh, plenty of room for uh, ancillary tables, whether a hutch or buffet table or anything like that, or can uh, carry a pretty good size dining room table in here. Again, the crown molding comes on through. You've got uh, pretty sure a coat, or no, this is a stairway to the basement. We'll look at that in a minute. But uh, nice big open living area here. You gotta love the uh, tall, tall ceiling and all the windows. So access right here to your dining room, into your kitchen. Huge island here. Looks out over everything very attractive floor to ceiling fireplace gas log uh, nice carpet inset there um, but this is all open and plenty of room and plenty of light the kitchen has this uh, quartz countertop with a good uh, lip so that you can put like four stools there Tile backsplash. Soft closed cabinets, of course. Architectural design. Refrigerator goes there. We've got the microwave and convection oven. Gas range or gas cooktop. Uh, everything's stainless steel, the hood fan, the dishwasher. There's a lot of space here. Back behind us here, we have um, the laundry room, the entry to the one car garage. And then over here, we have the entry to the two car garage. A little bigger, deeper. 
You got a coat closet here right as you come in the door, which is handy. And then down at this end, you have a good size pantry. That's nice. And you have a morning area here where you could put a table um, or you could do it with a couch and chairs, however you wanted to do it. Um, everybody's got a preference on that one. But lots of natural light. And uh, you have a little entry deck here that you could take down to a patio. Let's go upstairs and see what we've got. Oh, I forgot we've got a down at this end of the house. We have another coat closet. We have a bedroom. Pretty decent size. Closet. It's got a private door into this bathroom that then just also serves as the hallway bath uh, on the main level here. So, um, yeah, you do have a main level bedroom. If that's important to you, Go upstairs and see what we have. Carpeted stairways, nice width on them. Okay, got a bedroom here, good windows, good wall space. Walk in closet, another one to the back of the house. And this one has a private bath. Closet here. And then you have the hall bath up here, or common bath with a full tub and shower as well. Coming over this way, got another bedroom. Got the tradesman working in there, so we're gonna let that be. And now you got your master. Good size. Put your furniture in here all you want. You got the double French doors, which is a nice treat. And you even have the French doors on the bathroom. Okay, you've got dual vanities with a nice soaker tub in the middle. I think that's the tile I have in my bathroom. You have a uh, Private commode room, nice size shower, nicely tiled. You've got that bench seat that runs all the way across. And this is nice uh, walk-in closet. Good size. You could add a little bit more in terms of shelving or foot or, or shoe racks or whatever, but nice, nicely done. So this makes uh, really makes this uh, master bedroom a nice ensuite. Okay, nice view from up above here. Every time you walk past this, you get a good feeling. Let's go check out the basement. Okay, this is unfinished. Of course, you can always finish it however you want. There's a lot of space down here. I don't even know where to begin. The furnace and your plumbing's over here. I mean, let your mind wander, but you've got a nice tall ceiling here, plenty of head height. You've got an egress window for safety, but uh, you could cut this up into any type of number of rooms that you wanted. Workout room, office, uh, playroom, craft room, movie room, boy, you name it. Okay, this is a new construction home and it is ready now. Uh, we've got uh, five bedrooms and what, four full bathrooms, plus the unfinished basement, plus three car garage. It's a beautiful home. The ticket on it is $7.99. If you're interested in seeing it or any others, just hey, give me a quick uh, text or call and we'll set it up. You know, I started out as a contractor working uh, on projects like this, pounding nails and then running crews. And then later on I did construction lending. And uh, so I've worn a lot of hats and gained a lot of knowledge over the years that uh, can come into play and really help you here. But maybe more importantly than that is I'm the only person in the entire transaction 
that is obligated by law to advocate for you, to protect your interests. Everybody else is looking out for themselves, basically. And not that I'm saying that everybody's gonna take advantage of you, but I would be the only person in the transaction that is your advocate. Now, um, there's no fee for my services. It comes out of the transaction. You don't get a discount if you don't use a realtor but there's a lot of things I can do to help you here. You know, over the years, I've seen all kinds of situations arise. It's a people's business or people business, so stuff's gonna happen. I'm not saying that uh, every builder's gonna do that, and these guys are certainly excellent builders, but nevertheless, stuff happens. I mean, I've seen people forced onto other lots. Heck, I had a deal out in Colorado one time that uh, the uh, builder built the house over the property line. That was not fun to solve that one. Uh, but there's a lot of other things. Sometimes it's just delays with materials, uh, somebody not meeting um, schedule, or maybe it's just a misunderstanding about what goes where and all that type of thing. So um, those are things that I can help you with. One thing that people don't think about is the uh, typical purchase agreement for an existing house is like seven or eight pages. But on a new construction deal, it's like 40 or 50 pages, sometimes more than that, maybe 70 or 80. And hey, you don't know what you don't know. So it, it really helps to have another set of eyes on the contract and on the whole procedure uh, to help guide you through it. Hey, there's good reason why over half of my customers are repeat customers. I work harder to make good things happen. So before you uh, just jump in the car and go look at uh, the model homes and that type of thing, do yourself a favor, give me a call. I'll get you registered. Um, I'll set it up for you, help you out in any way I can. And I think it'll be a better experience, make the whole thing um, much higher customer satisfaction. And you know, to be honest, that's something that Fisher Homes here really prides itself on. Their customer uh, satisfaction ratings are off the charts. And there's not many builders that can say that. Okay, they've got a number of lots available out here. The typical build time is six to eight months. So if you want to start from scratch and get exactly what you want, they pretty much can customize most of these homes. They're not one of those builders that just say, uh, this is what it is, take it or leave it. Uh, they do quite a bit in the way, of, um, I'd call it semi-custom homes, okay? Uh, if that appeals to you, then uh, it might be uh, worth your time to sit down and talk with them and push some plans around and see if uh, there's something there that works for you. Now, if you're, uh scratching your head trying to figure out how to make it all work whether you need to buy first or sell first or uh, how to make the finances work I mean these are things that I've helped thousands of people with over the years and I'd be glad to sit down with you talk about the pros and cons um, of the either buying first or selling first and you know how it applies to your own personal situation and hey then you can be the judge for yourself what works and what doesn't one thing I'll point out too is that we offer what's called a room by room analysis. Uh, I'll walk through the house with you. You can tell me what you think needs to be done or maybe what somebody told you needed to be done. And I can about guarantee you that I can help you make money and I can help you save money. Uh, there's some things that really will add to your bottom line and there are others that, hey, you don't have to do. So good lots are like good houses. Uh, they can go fast. If there's something that uh, you wanna see, by all means, uh, give me a quick call or text and uh, we'll get you taken care of. The weather didn't cooperate. Uh, started to rain here at the end of the day. So uh, we're gonna do this map tour here from the uh, Tahoe. I'm um, gonna share with you just the incredible uh, opportunities there are within the area surrounding the uh, cove at uh, in Fishers, Indiana. Okay, for starters, I mean, you're so close to the interstate. I-69 is about five minutes away. Um, State Road 37 is probably uh, another seven or eight minutes away. Both of those will run south to the Beltway, which is I-465. And from there, you can go anywhere in the whole metro area. From the uh, standpoint of jobs, uh, you have a lot of jobs along State Road 37 and coming down 69 to the Beltway. Um, you have distribution centers and manufacturing along both of those major highways. And then down where the two come together, uh, you actually have a lot of financial service uh, companies. So you have Fair, uh, Forum Credit Union headquarters, you have Freedom Mortgage, and you have the uh, student loan servicers. And then you go a little bit further south, and then you're into uh, Roche Diagnostics, which is a Fortune 500 company. And throughout all of this area are tons of retail and just other service jobs of all sorts. 
Um, you also have uh, with 27,000 uh, children in Fishers, Indiana, you have uh, a huge number of uh, educational opportunities in terms of uh, school jobs. And there are, oh, uh, what is it? Five different health systems have hospitals within 25 minutes. So uh, when you add that, you have uh, just a ton of jobs all throughout this area. So let's talk about schools for a second. Um, the children here will go to Southeastern Elementary and then to the Hamilton Southeastern uh, Intermediate Junior High School and High School. Those are oh, all within uh, a mile, mile and a half, maybe something like that. So just right down the road. Uh, they are all rated A by niche.com. And in fact, the entire Hamilton Southeastern school system, I think there's 27 schools in total. It is ranked number eight out of 290 public school systems in the state. That's pretty wild. That makes it a top of what, 3% school. Um, in addition, you have uh, a couple real good Catholic high school options that are a little further away they're probably about 25 30 minutes away those are both rated a a plus that's a garen catholic in cathedral um, and then you have a lot of um, non-denominational private schools throughout the area that are fairly close by and then down at the beltway you have heritage christian which is uh, grades K through 12 and is A rated as well. Okay, moving on to hospitals. Boy, um, just down the road, you have the Peyton Manning Children's Hospital and the St. Uh, uh, Vincent's Ascension uh, Medical Hospital, then up at 140, or down at 146, so that's two miles south. You have another hospital in the community network. Uh, you have the Saxony Village um, IU Health, which is about six or seven minutes away, just south of Hamilton Town Center. Um, and then you have other uh, from the Riverview system. So you have, you know, tons of options in terms of hospitals and emergency rooms within anywhere from five to 25 minutes away. Um, and surrounding each of those hospitals are a lot of medical buildings. You know, you have OT and PT and you have neuro centers and you have surgical centers and physician groups and just a lot of different medical um, options for whatever your healthcare needs might be. There are a ton of things to do in the area, whether you're talking for the family, for children or for adults. Um, you know, for kids, you can go to like gymboree's and rock climbing and all sorts of different uh, activities for the kids. There's a great park system. It's got like 85 miles of trails, plenty of opportunity with, with entertainment. But to, today, uh, in just a bit, I'm going to take you through the, um, all the different music venues that are in the area. You've got the event center that will be open later this year with seats 8,500 people. Uh, be good for theater and comedy and sports and music. And then we'll go over to the uh, um, Nickel Plate Amphitheater. Uh, seats about 6,000 for summer concerts. And then up to Connor Prairie, which is a big, big regional attraction, a tourist attraction. And they have a summer concert series and seats 8,500. And then we're gonna stop in at uh, Ruoff Music Center, kind of sneak in the back door and take a peek at what's going on there. In the summertime, it is a real happening place. In fact, it, in 2018, it sold more tickets than any outdoor music venue in the entire world. So you'll be sure to want to hang around for that. Um, we'll also tour through some of the, a uh, couple of the top golf courses in the area, stick our heads in the door at Top Golf, which is always a fun time for everybody. And that's just down at 116th Street. And finally, we'll wrap the tour up with uh, a look at Hamilton Town Center and the yard, which are um, outdoor malls and with lots of great shops and they have really, really good restaurants. And I'll share my top two or three uh, favorite restaurants in each of those. Um, so you, you have some places that you can put on your list. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a look at uh, the most recent market update and I'll share a trend that uh, you can put to your use for your advantage. Hey, if you'd uh, like to learn more about uh, real estate in Fishers, Indiana or new construction homes in the greater Indianapolis area, or maybe you just wanna walk through a home you've seen advertised, be sure to uh, text me or give me a call or you can book a call. 
hey let's uh let's take a ride so if you're considering moving to the greater indianapolis area you'll be sure to want to pick up one of our relocation guides it's free there's no obligation or cost and uh hey my staff and i have prepared the ultimate uh, relocation guide you can pick up your copy in the comment section below coming up i'm going to share some of the top parks and recreational activities that are available practically in your own backyard fishers has done a really bang up job with its parks and rec department They've got 25 parks, over 600 acres, 61 sports fields. You can rent a pavilion or an event facility. There's two sledding hills, three fishing ponds, and four creeks to stop around in. And if you have any energy left, hey, there's 131 miles of trails that you can walk and hike. Hey, or you can head on over to the Geist Waterfront Park. You can rent a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard or head out on the lake. Geist Reservoir has a full-service marina, the Geist Marina or you can head over to the public launch ramp. But get there early, because it gets busy. The reservoir itself has 1,890 surface acres. It's the second largest in the state. You can tube, you can ski, you can swim, hey, or you can just chill. There's a lot of that going on. The bass fishing's pretty good. They have tournaments all summer long. Or hey, you can putz around and do, you know, the multi-million dollar home tour. There are other options. You can become a member at the Indianapolis Yacht Club. And no, you don't have to own a yacht. Lynn and I got married there. It was a great time. One of our favorite things to do is to boat up to restaurants. Be sure to check out Woofies. Check out these music and entertainment options. You won't believe all the shows you can take in. I'm sitting outside the, what will be the new Fishers Event Center. This is slated to open in December of 2024. It is a massive project. It's uh, $170 million and will anchor a $550 million project that oh, will encompass this entire area with shops and restaurants and other fun things to do. This will be home to the Indy Fuel, which is a minor league hockey team uh, of the Chicago Blackhawks. And it'll, they'll also host other sporting events uh, including the uh, Fisher's Freight, which will be an indoor football league team that will open, I believe, in 2025. Um, it will also host uh, music and comedy and theater and seat anywhere from 6,500 to 8,500 people. And this is all within walking distance of the yard. Yeah, Nickel Plate Amphitheater in Fisher's, Indiana. This uh, facility seats 6,000 people, lawn style seating. They have a full slate of different kinds of music throughout the summertime and fall, uh, something for everybody. One of the nice things is you can eat at one of the local uh, restaurants, come watch the show, enjoy it, and then go finish the night off at a local pub. Hey, this is a ticket you might want to score. Okay, our music tour continues. We're at Connor Prairie, which is a large regional uh, tourist attraction. It is open year-round. They have a variety of activities, uh, including hot air balloons and, uh, oh, the, what is this, uh, 150 or 200, 200 year old uh, working farm. There's a lot that goes on here. Uh, unfortunately, it's February and we're not going to get to see a whole lot of it. But so in the summertime, they have what's called Symphony on the Prairie. And the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra puts on uh, 12 concerts throughout the summertime. And all that area back there seats 8,500 people. Um, in 2023, they featured the music of Harry Potter, uh, the Star Spangled Fourth of July. They had tributes to uh, Marshall Tucker, the Fab Four, uh, Journey, Billy Joel, Elton John. Uh, uh, they did a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark um, theme. They just have a lot of fun. And when you come out here, what you do is you uh, you bring your blanket and your maybe your lawn chairs and a picnic basket with uh, dinner or, you know, some snacks to eat on and your favorite uh, beverage. And, hey, it's a good time. It really is. I know people that have, like, tickets for the whole season, all 12 nights. I usually make it out once, maybe twice at the most. But, uh, hey, I have a busy summer. So, but, hey, it is a good time. Okay, let's uh, finish our music tour with... Uh, the cream de la cream, uh, let's go look at Ruoff Music Center. This is Ruoff Music Center. Now, it's February and things are buttoned up really tight. Uh, they'll probably throw me out if they see me back here, but at any rate, I'll flash you some photos. 
you've got to you got to think about this this seats 25,000 people and uh, they have a complete lineup during the summer of all genres of music all-star lineup you can get a season pass even and uh, ticket sales for this are just out of this world in fact in 2018 Ruoff sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world and year in and year out they're in the top five I mean just crazy now if you get the uh, premier or the legends pass uh parking passes you can pull right up to the turnstiles you can tailgate you can walk right in and then uh at the end of the night you don't have to sneak out early you can stay till the very end you catch the encore you walk out it's five minutes to get out of the parking lot and you're another what two three five minutes home hey it's a great time. We're going to stop into two of the area's top golf courses and then check out Top Golf, which is always a great time, even if you're not a golfer. Hey, let's talk golf. Fishers has been ranked by one golf magazine or another as the number two most underrated golf community in the entire United States. So I asked uh, my stepson, Seve, and one of his former college teammates, which were the best golf courses in Fishers. And they both independently came up with the same two names, River Glen and Ironwood. We're going to take a tour of both of them uh, in just a second here. It's a uh, breezy day in February, and uh, while it's pretty comfortable, the course is closed because it's wet right now, and they're trying to get it into shape. But uh, this course is really pretty. They call it uh, Nature's Course. It sits along the White River, and um, it is a really delightful course to play. I'm going to walk around here and see what we can see got 18 holes here plus a driving range they have uh, men's women's and junior leagues they also have a very nice large pool and pool memberships uh, they also have a lot of event space here they do banquets in fact uh, years ago when I run a mortgage company we used to do our uh, celebration uh, breakfast meetings here very nice uh, there's three memberships there's a regular a junior and a family fun which includes the pool but just standing here, you can really see just how pretty this course is. Nice big deck up there to look out over all of this. Really beautiful. River Glen Country Club. Okay, I'm at Ironwood Golf Club in uh, Fishers, Indiana. And it is the end of February. And look at that parking lot. It is full of golfers out playing. How cool. They've got a driving range. Nice, lots of woods, water. And then over here, uh, they've got 27 hole course. Wines all over the place, very pretty, good course to play on, well maintained. They uh, have a variety of leagues, uh, a full junior program with leagues, camps uh, for kids all the way from five and up. They've got uh, the driving range and lessons and they have memberships for uh, singles, family, junior, senior, and young professionals, so take your pick. And then up there at the clubhouse, they also have some banquet facilities. This is uh, a course that if you move to Fishers, Indiana, you just might wanna play. While we're talking golf, let's talk top golf. Uh, this is a Tuesday afternoon in February, and the parking lot still has a good number of cars, but this will fill up and uh, be crazy about half the time. Inside, they've got a hundred climate-controlled bays, and this is more like going bowling than it is playing golf. I mean, you don't have to have your own clubs. It's like uh, when you go to the bowling alley, and yeah, there's some people that walk in with all the official gear, and they've got their own ball and bag and all that, and shoes. But, uh, you know, the rest of us go in there, pick a ball out, stumble to the uh, lane, and uh, throw it down there. Well, here at Top Golf. Um, it's kind of the same. You don't have to have your own clubs. Uh, there's no cost to rent them. Um, they have all sorts of events and you can see the bays here from the outside and then uh, out there into a hitting area. The uh, balls are uh, high tech and they score for you. They do all kinds of events and games. And uh, one of the neat things is there's like a bar and a restaurant. There's 200 TV scattered throughout. And uh, there's even uh, fire pits up on top of the uh, rooftop terrace. So this is great for uh, old birthday parties and uh, other kinds of get togethers, uh, companies uh, 
do outings here. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and you know, you get to hit a bucket of balls, and if you don't want to hit the whole bucket, somebody else will hit yours, and uh, you can sit down and drink. Hey, it's a good time one way or another. Join me as we tour amazing shopping destinations plus the fabulous foodie scene. I'll share a couple of my faves so you can add them to your must-try list. Get through here, it's got a, just a really wide variety of shops and really good restaurants, and in the areas surrounding uh, as well. So tons and tons of uh, retail shops and uh, food places and what have you. You've got uh, livery here, which is, oh, I'd call upscale Mexican. It's a Cunningham property and all of their restaurants are great. You've got Ford's Garage, which has uh, oh, really good burgers. And it's kind of interesting, fun place, the, the way some of their marketing and, and just little things like uh, napkins and, oh, different things that they do inside that really are kind of interesting make it kind of fun you have a total wine for all your uh, beer and wine needs you can't find it there I'm not sure you can find it anywhere over here you got DSW and Ben's Warehouse and oh, just all sorts of different places. I'm gonna take a ride down this little street. Very walkable. You got an old navy here. You got Lita Express, K Jewelers, Victoria's Secret, Soma. Fun place to shop. More shopping than I can do. Through 21, finish line. American Eagle over here. Five guys. Yats. The Three Dog Bakery. My wife spends too much money there. Up on the corner here we have uh, Pies and Pints. Pretty good pizza, real good salads. Over here is Stone Creek, another Cunningham property, one of my more favorite restaurants. And right in front of us is Dick's Sporting Goods. So just all kinds of uh, opportunity here to satisfy your retail and dining pleasure. Got a big movie theater to go along with it. We're getting ready to head into the yard and I wanted to stop just on the outskirts here. This is Portillo's and uh, I'm not a big fast food guy but this is a place I make exceptions for. When I was in high school uh, in Chicagoland these were little hot dog carts on the corner and we would go there at the end of the night and get a Chicago dog or an Italian sa uh, sausage sandwich or their big beef and uh, boy I think they're the best in the world I like my uh, big beef with sweet peppers and I like it dipped try it we're coming into the yard which is a recent development maybe in the last five years uh, lots of restaurants uh, other shops as well uh, this is the Hamilton uh, County Tavern and Kitchen it is a Hughes culinary property they are fabulous all of them make a little right here on the cobblestone street got uh, some upscale apartments up above some different uh, types of shops like uh, oh uh, hot sauna and athletic annex over here you have rise which is an excellent uh, breakfast place you have Kincaid's meat market which uh, goes back for many many decades some salons 
you've got a winery, you've got slap fish, you've got a Mexican cantina here on the corner. And right here you have one of my very favorites, which is San Giovese. It's one of the better Italian places around. They have good lasagna. They have maybe the best chicken parm in the entire city. Uh, over here you have Sun King Brewery. Uh, everybody loves their uh, cream ale. You've got the test kitchen. And then over here we have the Havana Cigar Lounge, if you're into that. And then the 1933 Lounge and the 101 Beer Pub. And there's a few others too. Um, the 1933 Lounge is interesting. It's another Hughes culinary uh, property. And you can notice up there on the sign it says 1933 Lounge by St. Elmo. Well, St. Elmo is uh, the most famous steakhouse in the city. It opened in 1902. People from all over the country uh, eat there when they're in town. All the, you find all the celebrities and sportscasters and all of that. Um, it was named because uh, during the Prohibition years, there was a speakeasy above St. Elmo's. And uh, so this property right here, the 1933 Lounge, is modeled after the uh, a speakeasy. My wife and I ate there the other night for Valentine's Day. It was great. They have to die for shrimp cocktail, uh, prime steaks, and I had a slab of prime rib that was just fabulous. Um, hey, it's something you might want to check out. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. We're about to put the winter months behind us and enter the spring selling season. Currently, there are 427 homes in Hamilton County with four sale signs in the front yard. That's 12% fewer than a year ago, and that's causing prices to remain sticky. Basically, they're unchanged from a year ago with the median price being $420,000. But so right today, you can still find a house for sale for $230,000. Or hey, you can go to the other end of the spectrum, and there's one on the market for over $8 million. Unlike Austin, San Francisco, and Boise, our market has slowed only slightly. A year ago, it took 10 days to sell a house, and now, oh my God, it takes 13 days. Price per square foot has increased just from $165 to $175, and that's basically due to the larger number of new construction homes being sold. Hey, not only is everything brand spanking new, but builders are offering 30-year fixed rate mortgages as low as 4.99%. You might want to give me a call. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. On Thursday we do a walkthrough of existing homes for sale in their surrounding neighborhoods. And on Saturday we give you a feel for what it's like to live in Indiana. So whether you're buying or selling, know that I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you found this video helpful, you'll love this next one. Watch it right now.